Uh, yeah, um, so Richmond had a coaching change three three games ago, um, and had yeah, have had sort of some good results since then. Maybe a slight uh, change in their style of play, which will be interesting. Um, but uh, definitely some dangerous attacking players. Um, got a great result against Penn FC and uh, new coach David second came in charge, and um, difficult team at home. Big field down there, and you know, chances are it'll be warm, much like it is here. So uh, I think you know if you look at the table in the East, you see you see a couple clubs that have have been pretty consistent, but then you see you know ten to twelve that are all condensed to within eight to ten points, you know, right in the middle of the table. And, uh, and for you know, for us, for Richmond, trying to put together a little bit of a run just to to climb our way back in. So they're in similar position. And, they're hungry just like we are. Now that the academy season is over, I'm assuming that's only the reserve teams game, correct? In the sense that they can play more academy players now. Yeah, you know, we've been pretty balanced throughout the whole season of, of including those guys uh, continuously. Um, for a few of them, they've had a long, you know, 10-month academy season, so we're having to be mindful of just giving them a little bit of a down cycle, a little bit of a rest. But I think as we enter August, um, yeah, we'll get to integrate a few more guys, maybe a little more consistent. Well, you can say the Bethlehem, your last win, the best performance of the season today, especially with the amount of shots you got on goal. And you look at it as like a turning point, possibly, to maybe get some more wins, and you said move up the Eastern Conference table? Um, yeah, perhaps. I mean, honestly, we, we try to take things game to game. And um, obviously, as we all know here, um, we do have some variation in terms of who's available from game to game. And so, um, you know, it's a bit of a coaching cliche, but when we have a good performance, we try not to to get too high with it and and you know and I said this actually after the game a good performance doesn't mean that everything is perfect just like performances where we've been on the other end of the scoreline don't mean that uh, that everything is is not great I think um, we really try to look game to game and look at each performance sort of individually and then um, take what we can from from each one and move on and obviously with Bethlehem it, it, it feels good to get a win against a good team and, and have a good performance and it just gives everybody a little bit of positive energy to keep working. You have the, the, the homegrown game here mm -hmm. and talk about Andrew and Lagos getting that opportunity to play uh, not only in that game but here in Atlanta. Yeah it's, it's great I mean I think for those two guys they'll obviously be very comfortable playing here at the training ground and I feel they've played on a lot. Um, nice opportunity for those two guys just to get another good game. Um, it goes to show, I think, the, you know, the, the recognition of the type of talent both those guys have. And also, I think, the fact that it's coming here um, just shows the stature of the club, uh, that we're getting the chance to host it, both the All-Star game and the homegrown game. Uh, we can do it in the friendly confines of, of uh, the training ground here. So I think it just goes to show that, that, uh, that uh, a lot of people nationwide are, are taking notice of what our club is doing. And, uh, and that goes the same for, for Andrew and Lagos, um, recognition of their talent. And we're thrilled they're involved. We'll be watching and cheering them on, and obviously Tony will be on the sidelines, so that'll be nice for him and also for our guys to have a friendly face uh, looking over him for that game. Yeah. I've seen Bello getting some wind sprints in. What can you tell us about his recovery process? Yeah, getting closer, which is great, and we're excited about it. He's, uh, he's touching the ball a little bit and, and working his way through return to play protocol. So. Um, uh, you know, putting a hard line on, on his timeline um, is not something I'm going to do, uh, but signs have been positive, and so he's certainly moving in the right direction. And, uh, you see a big smile on George's face um, because he's thrilled to be back on the field, moving, touching the ball, and, and doing what he loves to do, which is play. I think it's hard for any 16-year-old uh, kid, even one who's as professional as George, to, to have to be um, away from the field for that length of time. You think careful to bring in some of the guys like Lagos when they're back from injury, bring them back into games? Just bits and pieces, but also picking the spots to put him in chances to succeed. How difficult can that be at times? Finding the right time to bring a guy in to get him that work. Yeah, um, you know, as a coach, as soon as a guy's available, you wanna you wanna stick him straight back out there and have him go full bore. But um, but the investment I think the club has made in, in the sports medicine, the sports science, we know better than to do that. We uh, we have experts that can help us bring the guys back the right amount of minutes at the right time. And because we're a development team, we're not only concerned with getting results, we, we stick to that um, quite formally. So that um, if it's a Lagos in his first game back, he should only play 30. 
you know, that's what we do and we find the right game for him to do that. And now he's kind of built his way back up and, and getting on to full fitness. And so um, it's, it's good timing because we're excited to have him back. He's got the homegrown game coming up and I think he'll be nice and sharp um, for this, uh, this dense run of fixtures and also that game.